Okay, I'm back in the shop and I'll go ahead and start working back on the field coil. Seems like the lightning now has passed to the east of me. I took a 40 foot section of the existing magnet wire. You can see we're reading about at 34.5 to 34.6 ohms of DC resistance. In my calculator, I've got plugged in 34.6. I can divide that by the 40 feet times 1,000 and uh, come up with 865 ohms of DC resistance per 1,000 feet. So if we look at a wire gauge here, which I'm showing, you'll see we're somewhere between a 39 and 40 AWG wire. So Again, if you were looking at the AWG size, somewhere probably closer to a 39.5. Now, the reason for the failure was probably heat over time. Again, the wire is uh, very much undersized for the current consumption of the receiver. Let's look at that math real quick. So we're really fortunate here. This particular schematic gives us all the information we need. You can see the voltage across the speaker fuel coil at the bottom in red is called out at 70 volts. And then in blue, I have the DC resistance of the fuel coil at 1800 ohms. We can use Ohm's law, voltage divided by resistance equals amps. And you can see I've done that. And that places us around uh, 39 milliamps. Going back to the chart that I shared earlier about circular mils per amp, I can reference that and I can safely probably rewind the fuel coil using 35 AWG wire. And that would uh, keep me above the uh, 38 or 39 milliamps of current passing through the wire and create less stress on the fuel coil over time. Now, I may not have enough room on the bobbin. One thing I did notice with the uh, finer wire that was used, that being between the 39 and 40 AWG, only probably 60, 70% of the bobbin was full. So what I'll do is go back with the 35 AWG. I'm not worried about the turns. I really just want to focus on 1800 ohms of DC resistance. So I'll just wind or fill the bobbin and then check DC resistance. If I'm greater than 1800 ohms, I'll remove wire. And if I'm less than that, I'll add a resistor in series to make up the difference if that's needed. It's good to see the weather improve as the day passed. I was taking a closer look at things and uh, you can see what I did. I've got a, a simple spreadsheet that I put together. And I've got all the specifications in here for the 39 AWG wire. And you can also see the bobbin specifications that I'll be working with as well. In doing so, it allows me to calculate or estimate the number of turns and the number of layers or wraps of wire that I would need to get the desired DC resistance of 1800 ohms. Another thing I wanted to do was look at the circular mils per amp, looking at the specifications for the wire and doing the calculations. You can see that we're well under 500 circular mils per amp at 314 using the 39 AWG. So again, not the best design and uh, not anything that I want to go back with because it would create much heat and stress on the fuel coil based on uh, 39 milliamps of current. Scrolling down the spreadsheet you can see as I get closer to 8600 turns that would give me my 1800 ohms of DC resistance based on the calculations that I've done. So the original coil would have had somewhere around 86 to 8,700 turns. Again, I had a question, I think, from Eddie. I did not count these when I was removing the uh, coil, knowing that the wire was undersized. My original plan to use the 35 AWG to rewind is uh, not practical. I ran the same numbers through this model and you can see in this case I'm looking at a 36 AWG 
that I'll use, but the uh, 35 puts me well above my target on the fill, and I would exceed my 12 millimeter window that I have. In addition, the number of turns which would influence the flux or the magnetic energy back over as well to the uh, center pole piece would be influenced as well. So I'm going to compromise and use the uh, 36 AWG and then make up the difference with a resistor. So my target will be somewhere around 1000 ohms as you can see and somewhere around 8700 turns which will get me in close proximity to the number of turns that we had with the 39 AWG magnet wire. So I think that's going to be a better match and again I'll make up the difference using a resistor. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you found it uh, helpful and interesting. I just don't have enough uh, 36 AWG wire to uh, get to my design point. So uh, once I receive that, we'll go ahead and wind the new fill coil and get that part behind us. And then I can turn my attention to the uh, loudspeaker getting it back together. Again, thanks for watching and following along. Everyone out there, take care and stay well.